very much so there we go evangelizing awesome we're ready to go so let's go ahead and start it off by saying that hello welcome to simulation series i'm your host alan Saki, and today we have the pleasure of sitting with robert skull hey hello thanks thank you thanks for coming this, this is, is awesome. the room where Siri started. I don't know if you knew that or not. The room where Siri started? Yeah, I was the first one to see Siri, and they launched it on my couch. Right <laughs> Siri was launched on the couch behind you right now, everyone that's watching, right over there. It's that's crazy. amazing. Yeah, it's, what did I've you had think? a blessed life. You know, I've had a series of first. I was the first one to get a ride in the Tesla with Elon Musk. I was the first one to see Flipboard, first one to see Pandora, first one to see Siri. First one to see a DJI drone. I flew a DJI drone over there. Yep. So, um, first DJI drone, first Tesla ride, first Flipboard use. Wow. And then that's just start. That's just yeah. wow. Yeah. I mean, so so, so did, did Cloudera they, was the first one to see. Do that. do they come to you because you've had so much interdisciplinary research in the tech industry? I had an audience, and people love to launch things to have big audiences. Big <laughs> yeah. audiences. Yeah, yeah. No, the world yeah. is changing. I mean, I'm studying the world in a new way on exactly. Twitter behind us. Yeah. Yeah. I've really over the last four four months, I've really spent a lot of time. Uh, studying Twitter in a whole new way, and uh, it just announced they just announced uh, good earnings today, so their stock is up. So it shows that Twitter is uh, on an, a little bit of an uprise, and Facebook is under yeah. a little bit of pressure. Yeah, know? yeah. It's um, you're one of the first people that I've met that has said that my Facebook posts get more engagement than my Twitter yeah. posts, um, because right now the masses are saying that Twitter is giving me more engagement I, and free speech than Facebook is. It's still true today, uh, even with the Facebook news feed changes that are happening, and, and I'm, they're still changing, and I don't know that I like the changes, um, but I can tell why they're doing the changes, and I'm studying addiction in a whole new way. Exactly. Um, Tristan but, Harris is also studying addiction. In and he just started a new organization that. that's taking on the addictive properties of these networks, and he's urging uh, regulation to happen, uh, exactly. particularly with young kids, which... I sort of agree with. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have gotten there probably four months ago, but I'm really starting to understand the addictive nature of these things. Uh, it was harder for me to give up my phone for a week than to give up alcohol. Yeah, and yeah. alcohol is highly addictive. So. Yes, yes, exactly. That's a great way to put it. And also with that meditation retreat I was telling you about earlier, 10 days is no tech, no talking, no eye contact. And yeah. it's a beautiful technology detoxification. Even something as simple as just being able to go into a mode on my phone where I'm just asking to not be interrupted, not silent mode, but just where I'm asking for notifications to not come through, not be in airplane right. mode. But then when, if somebody's emergency trying to get to me, they can break through it. You know, Tristan Harris has been working on that double, you have well, to send twice to get and to it. These companies are a little naughty with it. For instance, if you try to turn off on an iPhone, uh, Facebook messengers notifications or not even turn them off just turn them down so that you don't get the the flashing ones the it, flashing it, ones. it puts a it puts a notification of its own on your lock screen and it doesn't let you get rid of it you know uh, because it says oh you ha have to turn back on notifications to get rid of that notification it's like oh they are naughty Whoa. they're naughty naughty definitely they're naughty yeah. And you're so this is this is amazing. I love how you went right into it because that is kind of we're going to talk a lot about technology and and what you've been through and where we're going and kind of some of the ethics and some of the ways to maximize humans using uh, technology in beneficial ways, benevolent ways. So again, yeah. we, we like we like simulation likes pairing together global leaders with thought provoking questions. And we also like to. We like to inspire people to build the future of civilization. And so you guys can find us on Patreon. We're currently providing people with awesome benefits like being able to ask our guests questions, being able to get exclusive content, access to live events ahead of time, access to our guest list ahead of time. So if you do enjoy what we're doing, please like, comment, share with other people, and also give us a membership subscribe on Patreon. And it's patreon.com forward slash simulation series. So without further ado, um, you already jumped into it on a lot of the, on a lot of the history side of things. Um, so you did, so Scobalizer was a, a massive publication, it was a publication that you had started that grew a lot of interest in the, ge in the geeks and nerds. I, I was early to blogging, uh, you know, I started blogging in 2000, and that was just when Google was getting big. 
and it turned out uh, blogging was a disruptive technology uh, based on Google. So as Google got more and more important, blogging you got more and more important, at least in the first four or five years. And that's when you saw all sorts of interesting tech brands get born. TechCrunch, Engadget, Gizmodo, yes. uh, Huffington Post all got born in that time period because Google was getting more important. And blogging was the best way to get high up on Google because we all were linking to each other. Yes. And Google's uh, page rank was, in those days, was based on linking behavior. Yes. Now it's not so based on that, but it still has a little bit of an effect there. But that made me and got me a big audience or a, an important audience, and that got me a job at Microsoft, which got me inside of a, a big beast and got me a exactly. point of view that very few other people still today have. Most journalists yeah. don't have never worked inside a big company. They've yeah. worked at media brands, but they've never worked you know, inside a tech company. Exactly. And I've worked now at, at a couple of big tech companies, a couple startups you know, uh, that went away, so I know what it's like <laughs> to yeah. try a startup and fail, but yeah. I understand what the, the thing about a startup is all about and what working at a big company is all about. Yeah. So then it went from building up through blogging, building this following that loves your content. You make content basically relatable to people in a fun way. Yeah. And that was a big thing for people to well, enjoy your it's writing. It's interesting, you know, it, um, if you talk to, so one of the Facebook executives lives a couple doors down, and if you talk to Facebook, they, they tell you, oh, uh, if you do video today, you should make them one minute long or two minutes at most with subtitles and make them really flashy, a lot of cuts, That's, right, yeah, to yeah. kept, because yeah. people are going through their phones looking like for something fun to watch, attention. right? Yeah, yeah. And certainly if you want millions of hits, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah. I did uh, sort of what you're doing, which is sit down with an entrepreneur and do mm -hmm. long, boring videos. Because <laughs> I'm generally interested in their company and what it does and the product, because exactly. I want to and understand. The deeper dives. Yeah. There is a whole audience of people that want to be inspired by these conversations that drive our future, and they want it long form. You, you're probably familiar with Joe Rogan's podcast. Yep. and I mean, his video casts go on for three hours sometimes. Yeah. So people really enjoy being able to come in, listen for a long period of time, come out. Yeah, yeah. If you're entertaining, that's really a good format. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, I'm just very passionate about new technology, and I always yep. want to understand what's going on. And you know, it, it continues. A, yeah, my, I have Hololens. Microsoft and, Hololens right here. You know, this is uh, the newest and pretty much best AR augmented reality technology. That well, exists. until. Uh, Magic Leap ships in a couple months. <laughs> exactly. This is going to be very obsolete by the end of the year. <laughs> Magic Leaps, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it's funny because Facebook is working on glasses. Yep. Apple's working on glasses. Snapchat Magic, has theirs. Magic Leap yeah. is working on glasses. Snapchat just canceled theirs, but their, their glasses were a camera with Correct. no display. Yes, and then there's Austin How uh, Design Group, ODG. Yeah, uh, but you're going to see a whole new range of glasses over the next three years. Um, but they're too big and too ugly. But they're amazing when you wear them. They're incredible. But what they do. this is a wow. this is one point two pounds, and it's too heavy for me to wear very long. But it when me you too. when you wear it, 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 aliens come out of the walls. Aliens come out of the walls. Exactly. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Exactly. Social and security you can, numbers pop up. Credit card numbers pop up. The, the other thing is, I mean, you see how many screens I have around me. And I can watch, you know, my email, Twitter, yes. Facebook, all happening at the same time. Yes. And uh, I can see this sharply. If I play the same screen in a HoloLens or in my VR machines, you know, like mm. an Oculus Rift or a yeah. HTC Vive, it's not sharp enough to read, read text. And the optics won't be good Correct. enough until later this year. Correct. Uh, HTC just announced at CES a new higher resolution exactly. VR machine, and we'll see if it's good enough for text. Yes. And yes. you need Correct. it. That's a, it's so important. You need it to virtualize your screens because I want to get rid of these screens and have virtual screens all around yes. me. Yes. Um, why why pay for the electricity and pay for the physical screens? And you need place to store them. I'm, exactly. I'm you know I'm looking at. Uh, I want more screens around me, and I don't have the uh, ability to put more physical screens, so I want uh, glasses that virtualize the screens. And those yes. are coming in the next few years. Higher resolution, yeah. um, we need lighter weight, 
we need uh, gr better connectivity and wireless connectivity for them. Yeah. So all of these things are coming. 5G is just literally, 5G. I just saw somebody talking, uh, Anshul is talking about 5G. 5G brings 25 gigabits per second down to your glasses, right? Oh my so goodness. So we're watching uh, 200 megabits per second up on, this, on these screens, right? And, you, and that's good enough for 4K video. Wait until you have 25K, you can have as many screens around you as you want, all happening live. That really matters for things like self-driving cars as well. Uh, being able to send and receive that kind of data flow that's and update, update the systems in exactly. real time. When, when you start studying the world in 3D, the amount of data going up and down is gonna be pretty intense. Yes. Exactly. And wait until we start thinking about multi-party augmented reality. Um, multi-party augmented yeah, reality. Yeah, let me show you this. Uh, um, the new thing came out from Google yesterday. Let me see if I can get it up and running fast. Motion still, right? Ooh. And you put it in AR mode. Uh -huh. And you put a little dinosaur on your hand. There you go. So there's a little dinosaur on my hand or a little cookie guy Ron, on my can hand. Ron, can you get a zoom on this? Okay. Yeah, I don't it's know. All good. It's all good. Well, well, let's bring it to the one that's live right now. Which one is it? Is it it's this one? Yeah, here you go. Yeah. So let me uh, see yeah. if I can let's demo do a, this. Do a demo. Put a little thing in my hand. Uh, let me see if I can get something a little bit bigger. Um, why isn't it big? Ah, there we go. So you can sort of see they're starting to sense uh, uh, the physical world, and they're starting to put augmented stuff on top of that physical <laughs> world, He's right? got a dinosaur on his hand. On my hand, and it's pretty good. It's, it's not perfect yet, but it's pretty good. Yeah. This gives you a sense of where things are going, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, built, built, we have some built, other examples. Built right into the Native Photos app. Well, Native Photos app, but think about wearing a pair of glasses in a few years, and exactly. now I'm gonna augment things on top of the real world. There's exactly. gonna be you know, exactly. new kinds of board games on exactly. tables, new kinds of things on top of clothes, yes. new kinds of information displays. You know, everybody should have this whenever they want. Whenever they want, accessible you know? to them. Directions, Hey, hey email. Google, show me Twitter, right? Exactly, hey Google, exactly. And we have Google at home here, and we have Alexa now with Amazon exactly. Echo. So you start talking to the house. Exactly. You're soon gonna be talking to your glasses and asking for help with things, right? Set the mood for calm, play my Spotify playlist, yeah. all that good stuff. Okay, Google, uh, can you play ACDC? You know, and it recognizes what you're doing yeah. and starts playing oh, ACD. On Spotify. You know, we don't, we don't want to play it. Um, but yeah, exactly. Just like that. And yep. it, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Let's turn all that off. Okay, Google, stop. Thank you. <laughs> so so, it, so we're, we've, we're talking about, you know, the history of technology now with exponential increases in processing speeds and in making equipment smaller we're uh, exploring space with these things we're um, figuring out how to map the functionalities of the brain of the genome um, artificial intelligence autonomous vehicles blockchain there's all, all these technologies that are moving forward so you know you were just describing a bunch of augmented reality uh, futures where do you see all of this going the singularity, man. The singularity, yeah. <laughs> Jack us in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's scary, right? Because that brings up all the Black Mirror kind of stuff, right? Yeah. If you haven't watched Black Mirror, Please Black do. Mirror is playing with all of these new technologies that are, uh, and taking them, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 years into the future and starting to think about the dark sides. Exactly. Right? What happens when you have Twitter? all the time and you what if if you could never turn this off, off. if it's oh. always there always there and yeah. you're always inside and they, they yeah. the script writers are start playing with that kind of world exactly. well now you have to worry about your getting rated and retweeted and right exactly. and that causes all sorts of problems for human beings exactly. we weren't designed to look at a screen like this all the time we were designed to walk through a forest and look for a lion trying to eat us yeah. you know yeah. 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 <laughs> which was a rare event yeah. right yeah. and so you would to it, pick the right berries so that we can eat without dying yeah well that's why your mind goes in a high flow state and starts recording things when when mm -hmm. uh, terror is happening well this terrorizes yeah. me every day just watch what you know our president's done <laughs> yeah. 
And so it gets your mind really amped up. And the companies built these things to take advantage of the dopaminergic of how our right? minds work and yep. get us addicted to this yeah, stuff. Correct. And it's highly so addicting. It's a lottery. It's Every so single... addicting. I keep looking at yeah. it instead of looking at you and talking to you. And I'm supposed to be doing an interview. It's right? a, it's a lottery. It's a it's a reward circuit hijack of it's yeah. a constant pull in the slot machine. What's next? What's next? What's yeah. next? Okay, so we have this dystopic. Uh, we have the we have the black mirror to show us what these the futures look like dystopically, and then how do you envision us to best work together to figure out how to make it more utopic? The, there's us? always, with all technologies, there's a good and a bad, right? Driving, everybody understands the good. You know, we've been sold that in Corvette ads. <laughs> mm -hmm. It takes us places. We get to go and to work. We get to go, you know, to the score to the store. We get to go on a nice drive along the coast if you li are lucky enough to live near the yeah. coast. But they kill thirty thousand people a year, yeah. right? We don't think about the bad. We don't think about yeah. the cost. We, we don't, don't think about the traffic, the congestion of these arteries in society. We, we think about the good, right? The stress levels that come from that. And of all of these technologies are going to have a lot of good. Um, you know, know, I wanted this yes. when I was in journalism school. I ran the Associated Press wired machine, and it was sort of like having one of these feeds. And I was able to see the world in real time. Yeah. I remember the day uh, O.J. Simpson was found not guilty. There was 600 stories filed in an hour. And I was able wow. to see what was happening in real time from all the journalists who were there yes. filing stories. Story, story. And I wanted that. I, I said, why do I have to, why, why as a news consumer do I have to wait 18 hours to see the news in the newspaper the next day exactly. and only get one or two stories? I want all yeah, 600, 600 stories. I want to see it from all points of view. And today I have that. This is, Beautifully this is my Associated Press wired machine. I get to see the world from the uh, point of view of investors, point of view of uh, founders, point of view of people in the crypto space, point of view of tech journalists, right? Uh, on and on. But this has a downside too. It, you know, addiction and, and uh, false news now is a problem because we're all spreading our own news. You know, back in the newspaper day, we had a committee who decided what everybody was going to read, right? An editor committee. Mm -hmm. And it was hard to get through that committee. You know, if you were a journalist, you had to argue your case that this story deserved Correct. to be on the front page Correct. of the newspaper. And the committee, the editor, the editor in chief, the, the, the assistant editors all got together every day and said, okay, that story deserves to be on the front page where everybody's going to read it. Today, we're all on the front page all exactly. the time. Yes. So if I post f fake news and everybody thinks it's real, you, you see it and you have to deal with it. Yeah. And we're now getting played by foreign governments this way, right? They're building bot networks that are bot putting networks. information yes. into the stream. Yeah. That's really hard to figure out what's it's right and what's wrong. Tr what's exactly. wrong. And even the news brands, they've fired a lot of their fact checkers, right? Back when I was a kid, they had a lot of money. They had a lot of business model. Mm -hmm. uh, the local newspaper had 400 journalists working for it. Now wow. they have 40. Wow. Right? So the fact checking systems that built these brands are gone. And so now even the New York Times puts stuff out there that turns out not to be true because it didn't have the same vetting system it did 30, 20, 30 years ago. So this is a real problem for society. How do we build s s uh, citizens that understand how to, how to pick the right thing from the wrong thing from this data flow? Exactly, us? and it's it, a perfect segue into the point. So you described about technology being having a lot of really good, important benefits that we need to maximize and some things that are not so good. And let's lead into this one, which is that we have an overflow of data and it's hard to find the signal from the noise. Yeah. So you do things like this to find some signal from the noise. Yeah. Um, and it seems like maybe doing something like tweet deck and organizing these lists by people that you find most informationally accurate to be a good practice. Yeah, and, and now the companies are building AI pattern recognizers to pick out the news for us. I, I told you about one. I, over here, here I see uh, trending items, right? Yep. Bill Gurley is trending because he just testified at yep. the uh, Uber, uh, Google court case. They're suing each other about the self-driving car. Yep. And he just testified. So that the AI put him into my view because it sensed that something was going on. He was being mentioned a lot, right? 
And so now uh, uh, these systems can see things, patterns, and bring them to our, our uh, attention. But those patterns can have biases. Yep. Because we're biased. Exactly. We're, we're biased, and we uh, have taught these systems to be biased. So now, you know, who's checking the raw data to see what's, bi what's biased and what, you know, what's brought up here? And you and I both know that, that popular news is not necessarily the best news, right? Absolutely. It's, it's like, we don't care that much about Kim Kardashian. We'd rather hear about what's going on with space exploration uh, or genetic engineering. But I guarantee you, whatever Kim, Kim Kardashian does, trends, right? Yeah, exactly. Because she has a way of getting people I interested in what she's doing. Yes. I, and I, I've seen that. But I call that McDonald's. Right, Mac news, right? Yeah. <laughs> <It's making it. laughs> Popular news isn't necessarily the broccoli that we need to be. Uh, exactly, to be, that's a great analogy. Right? Yeah. If you eat only McDonald's. Big Macs every day for a month, you're going to be sick, sick right? Yeah. If you don't yeah. eat some broccoli and heard? some carrots and some, you know, <laughs> vegetables. And well, that's like funny. The food analogy for content is so funny. Yeah. yeah. And I see it, right? We're it, sipping on Coca Cola's all day long, this high yeah. fructose corn syrup, rather than yeah. um, taking a little bit of, of uh, Project Juice. Uh, some and we're getting juice. it in, in little dopamine hits, yeah. right? We're not getting the long book anymore. Yeah. Very, very right. few of us are reading books. books. Yeah. Very few of us are reading the New Yorker or the Economist magazine Correct. style, so long good. form. Mm -hmm. People call that slow news, right? Yeah, yeah. News you have to read for 20 minutes just oh. to go through a single article. Article. You don't get that here very book. well. Yeah, Actually, yeah. Twitter does bring it to you if you set it up right. I, I'm using a, a, an app called Nuzzle. Uh -huh. And Nuzzle uh, shows me the most popular long form articles oh, that have been retweeted. And I, I find that reading this instead of this makes me smarter helpful and uh -huh. with less noise and less Smart. dopamine hit less yeah. addiction nuzzle the, yeah because you don't get the you don't get the dopamine hit here you get the dopamine hit because things are moving things are moving things are calling your name looks like the stock right? market actually it, it yeah. is the stock market the stock market's plunging right now right according there. to cnbc right yeah. these stocks are leading the plunge as market volatility continues so so maybe as you know we're, we're talking a lot about social we're talking a lot about the future of technology this is all amazing that we can definitely go down this uh, and how it can maximize human potential um, we, we can talk about that we can maybe circle back to it as well later but maybe let's let's move on for now and see if we can chime in on your your conversations with these thousands of technologists and executive well, over time I, I backed way down but my best friend runs innovation at JP Morgan Bank Right. Yep. So we talk about crypto a lot. We talk about what, what the future of banking might be. He's one of the 12 guys who built the iPhone. So amazing. He, amazing technologist. And, and he has an amazing network of his own. Across yeah. the street here. I mean, this is nerd heaven. This I don't know if heaven. you knew. GoPro literally started on one side of my house. And on the other side of my house, I can walk to Steve Jurvetson's house, which is exactly. the guy yeah. who invested in yeah. Tesla future, and yeah. SpaceX yeah. and... Uh, Hotmail and all exactly. sorts of Skype, all you sorts guys are of stuff, just right? All right here in this Half Moon Bay. Conference. Well, this is Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, Silicon Valley, if I was yeah, in exactly. Hollywood, I'd have movie stars. You have around movie me. stars around you, exactly. Right? Yeah, and we prefer this. This is why we live here, and that's yeah. why we care about this. And we know what this means to driving the world. It's the broccoli and the carrots instead of the Coca Cola. So we we have interesting conversations. I mean, I, I get to hear about the struggles of Facebook because a Facebook executive lives lives down the street, and uh, right across the street is SAP's AI guy, right? Yeah. So we talk a lot about you know how real is AI and what's hype, what's not, and there's a lot of hype, of but there's a lot of real, and we you know he's running supply chains. SAP is how you order things, right? I used to run SAP at NEC. To order things, to, to keep track of our inventories yep. and our supply chains yep. and what's going on, right? And so if you want to know how, how supply chains are changing, just talk to that guy, right? And that's changing a lot because of robotics and uh, self-driving cars soon and AI that recognizes patterns yes. and notifies you when things are happening. Another friend is building an AI and he finds human trafficking going on. It, because his AI goes through all the information in the web. Think about that, right? He has an AI, a personal AI that, that basically is a Google now. Yeah. yeah. Well, a, 
a good chunk of it, maybe not yeah. all, but a lot of it. Yeah. And it, it looks for patterns. And it finds patterns. And it finds patterns that don't fit. Like, yeah. there's ads on Craigslist for Toyota Priuses that were built in 1979. The, AI, the AI says, what? Yeah, what? And kicks out a notification to him and says, I just found a Toyota yeah. Prius. <laughs> That was not that was built in 1979 for sale, but can't be possible because it found a pattern uh, of Toyota Priuses only are built from '91 right to today, and so there was an outlier and it kicked it over to him and he started looking at it and found out it was it. human trafficking ads. Oh no! So the human traffickers were making up fake ads to sell humans to other people, and there was a game, you know, there was a, a code. That if you see a 1979 Prius or something like that, oh, it, you wow. would find a human to buy, <clears throat> right? And you would know how much she is, what race she is, all based on code in the ad. Is this part of what Ashton Kutcher's up to as well? Ashton probably is working with this guy. Oh, maybe. It really should be, yeah. Um, he's working with the FBI now and, and stuff like that. But that gives you an idea of the pattern recognition capability of wow. computers. I can't see patterns like that. No, now, humans just, we have to invest way too much time to find this and pattern. And in fact, the FBI didn't know that this was going on. Yeah. So he recognized wow. something new happening in society based on the information out wow. on the public internet. But let's talk about self-driving cars. I just wanted to say those patterns are, yeah. that, that's insanely important. If you find outliers like that and yeah. push a notification, do some research, <laughs> those little 0.1 percenters that are kind of straggling in these different areas and to identify them and see what's going on, they could also be kind of the eureka moments for civilization. Like, why are these people also doing this thing that could be different than what everyone else is doing that could actually be very beneficial as the, well? The same information is being used to sell, sell and buy stocks. Right, Foursquare knows, knows how well the iPhone sold before Apple discloses it because it knows how many people walked into the store the day that they went for sale. So now Foursquare has the data to tell investors, sell your stock, nobody's buying iPhones or buy more Apple stock because Apple sales are higher than we expected, right? Because more people are walking in the store than we expected, stuff like that. He, he has this, the same guy who's doing hum, yeah. human trafficking. He, his thing kicks out stocks to buy. It's been trained to look for stocks to buy based on patterns. Dude, right? you are the most insane <laughs> person I've ever spoken to about technology. Which, you are so amazingly connected into the tech sphere. It's which, incredible. I love hearing yeah. you speak about this. It's amazing. Which, you, before the cameras turned on, you asked me about stratification of human beings. Doesn't owning an AI like that give you a lot of power? Absolutely. And a lot of potential wealth. And, and just a better life. A better life, yeah. Because it tells you, like, hey, a new restaurant opened up today that a famous chef is opening up locally. I saw that on Facebook. And guess what? A Michelin-rated uh, yeah. chef opened a little tiny restaurant here in Half Moon Bay. And... And if you're watching the news, you, you would get see there it. First and build a but, relationship. but if you have an more, AI telling you how to live for Apple stock, you can know about what's going to be happening to at, certain companies because of you parsing, finding signal in a lot of noise. Yeah. I, I had dinner with a CEO of an oil refinery in Canada, in eastern uh, Canada, and he says that the financial analysts have paid for satellites to be over his refinery with a sensor looking at heat. And if his refinery goes offline for any reason, yeah. it turns cool. Exactly. Or it turns really hot because it just blew up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Either of it, they, the oil markets need to know. Wow. And, and every second you know means millions of dollars because you can sell, stock, sell oil Jeez. prices. Uh, uh, before the oil price changes, right? Or when Robert's maybe texting somebody and saying, hey, sorry, I was on my email the last two hours, but really you were taking a run or eating at a restaurant or something, and then Google is able to be like, no, he wasn't sending emails for two hours, and yeah. you know, there's all this kind of stuff. AI, if you maybe we go into a little bit of the wealth stratification. Um, well, well, this, okay, this, this is where it's going, right? The wealthy are going to have an AI. Right? They're going to invest yes. in having their own yes. version of what my friend has to show them new patterns in life, make sure, you know, or they're going to pay him 
to run their AI and let them know when they should sell their investments, when, you know, when exactly. they should uh, move, you know, because all of a sudden the world climate's changing and they can see that There's before that, other yes. people. Or With their healthcare, measuring their biometrics, giving them feedback on what they should do. All sorts of interesting yeah. information, yeah. right? And they're getting access to the latest science. So I've, I went down to South Africa and I met with Cheryl Lee Calder. She's an eye doctor down in South Africa. She works with professional athletes and she hacks their brains. <laughs> Think about that one, hacking their brains. She's a professional athlete herself. She found a way to hack her brain, make her performance better, her perception system better. And she built a computer program to do that for athletes. Now you can do it too, it's $100 a month. Yeah. She took the worst rider on the South African cycling team in terms of falls per race. He kept falling because he had a perception problem uh -huh. in the peloton. And he used her app for 10 minutes a day for six months. He's best on the team today. Mm -hmm. So start mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, how do you become, I have to wear glasses. What if I could use her program and not exactly. have to wear glasses? Exactly. Does that make my life better? Or even if I have to wear glasses, if I can see a ball coming to me a little bit better, maybe I can play baseball with my kid. Yeah. Or teach my kid how to play baseball. Now, you know the difference between a gold medal and a silver. Well, here's the story. I, I met the guy who invented the backward high jump, uh, Dick Bosbury, right? Mm -hmm. And he told me the difference between gold and silver that year was two centimeters, 8.3 feet in the air, right? That was... Wow. And by winning the gold, you get your name on the frickin' sport. Yeah. Everybody calls it the Fosbury flop. The number two guy, I don't know the guy's, guy's name. guy's name. Right? And he so, was just that much. So yeah. in terms of the difference between winning silver and gold is very small uh, numbers. So yeah. if you get an eye doctor who teaches you how to see things better, boom, you're winning golds. Yeah. Yeah. And you're winning, you know, you're changing yeah. sport. Yeah. You're Stephen Curry. <coughs> and I know Stephen Curry is using techniques like hers to improve his perception system mm -hmm. so he can see that basket and see the ball way better than his teammates can yeah because he found a way to hack his brain yes. so this is what rich people are doing yes rich people yes. know about this because their kids go to stanford right yes and stanford puts you in touch with people like this i yes. met a i met a guy who's poor and his son is going to be a world-class soccer player he didn't know about this exactly so i said this is why you need to get your kid to go to stanford, stanford exactly. or carnegie mellon or some place exactly. with really smart people Around illinois area, university yeah. or yeah. Waterloo University or a good university yeah. that has people like this who are interested in pushing human performance back. Exactly. So this gets back to te tech. Don't you want your kid to drive a self-driving car? I do because they will kill a lot less people. Yeah. They'll have a downside to them. You know, uh, they might kill him. Yeah. He might be the unfortunate one. You know, Tesla already killed somebody after 1.3 million miles. Humans kill people after 900,000 miles. Mm -hmm. So already the Tesla killed fewer people w with the sensors than a, than a human-driven car. Mercedes told me the same thing, that the bumpers with a sensor in them, they sell 15% fewer bumpers with just a front-facing radar sensor. Not full self-driving where it turns the steering wheel and stuff. It just warns you if you're about to hit something. And uh, it enables uh, radar-assisted cruise control, stuff like that. But it, it, it warns you if you're about to hit something, so it wakes you up. 15% yeah. less bumper sales. That means fewer deaths, yes, right? Yes. Just with a freaking sensor. So where's the Ralph Nader of this generation saying, why, why aren't these car companies putting this sensor in all the bumpers? We, we, we used to have this argument about seatbelts, right? They only put them in seatbelts in luxury cars because that was an expensive thing at the time in the 60s. And Ralph Nader said that should be in all cars. I'm arguing it should be in all cars. All of our kids should have access to yes. this technology. Yes. And I want self-driving cars for everybody. Um, yes. But that's and brain still hacking for everybody, better healthcare for everybody, better uh, signal from the noise, than AI for everybody. So let's let's talk. The rich about people this. have all this. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So let, so now let's, I uh, let's we go have into stratification. This. Exactly. So let's go into this. So you are surrounding yourself with very brilliant people. You live in an area that has lots of brilliant people. I do too, but you even more so here. I live in the city. Um, you live in Hapu Bay, very beautiful area, lots of smart people. Um, like you were saying, there's access to all these different kind of technologies that enhance their life in many different ways. 
and maybe somebody in Oklahoma doesn't have that, or maybe somebody in Africa or Southeast Asia that has yet to have that, um, or Latin America somewhere else. Maybe there are things in Hong Kong and Tokyo that people here don't have, etc. So my question is this then. Let's talk about stratification of the yeah. There's stuff classes. poor people, by the way. Yes, so, correct. People in those areas sometimes live more happy or more fulfilled lives with less things. Why? The question I, is why, yeah. I'm an alcoholic. I go to Alcoholics Anonymous, and I'm in touch with the bottom half of the world. Yeah, people who have yeah. killed people, people who have raped people, people who have fucked up their lives, yeah. gotten fired, had yeah. eight, eight DUIs, yes. gotten arrested. Right, spend time in jail. People you don't generally like to hang out with. <laughs> I've, I've done those things as well. Yes, they're they found a way to be happy. Yes, because they believe in God. There's something about yes. it. And I used to be a, a really anti-God person, but there's something about our human mind when we believe in a higher power. You don't even have to call it God. When you believe you're part of a system and you, there's something bigger than you, yeah. all of a sudden your happiness level goes up. Yeah. Number two, if you pray, your happiness level mm. goes up. If you meditate, your happiness mm -hmm. level goes up. Mm -hmm. So if you learn how to breathe deeply and yeah. calm your brain down, right? Yeah. All of a sudden you're thinking a little bit better. There was just a study I read on Twitter, 25% smarter uh, uh, people who meditate every yeah. day, which is weird. Yeah. But that's, you know, not Systems necessarily the rich thinking. people don't always get there, right? Because the rich people are focused on acquiring things and buying things and crushing things and doing yeah. things. They don't quite get the spirituality needed to be happy, right? Being social it makes you happier. Not being on alcohol or drugs makes correct, you happy, correct. right? So all of a sudden you can learn something from the poor, poor people, people in the world because well. they have uh, the ability to change and change rapidly because they have to to survive That's and good. certainly yeah. if you've been arrested eight times you better change or you're uh, going to spend the rest of your life in jail yeah. right you and that's change. not going to be fun and you're you're if you're an alcoholic or a, a drug addict you're facing huge consequences and we need to figure this out because we're killing 40,000 people a year on opiates, 53,000 actually, mm -hmm. I heard the latest number. That's a lot That's of a lot, yeah, and cannabis right. is slowly helping with that. Slowly that helping, yep. but VR, now let's talk about also, yeah. VR at the University of Washington found that VR is better at uh, curing physical pain on burn victims than opiates are. That's amazing. So why are we giving all of our kids opiates to get over pain? we should be giving them VR and say, play a game. That's counterintuitive. Most people don't, don't understand how that works. And there's old money in those industries that's slowing the progress. There we go. Down. There's a lot of money making on opiates and a lot of money on keeping people addicted. And this isn't stuff that politicians talk about a lot of times, right? Yep. And that's why we have an opiate problem. And it's expensive to buy VR right now. Exactly. So, yeah. And same thing with self-driving car. Having a self-driving car today, you know, a Tesla, first of all, you have to spend about $60,000 to get a Tesla with seven cameras on it. That's for a fairly wealthy person, yeah, right? Absolutely. That's not for your absolutely. Toyota crowd yet. It's yeah. getting closer. Yeah. I can see how exactly. it's going to get there, but um, not yet. Yeah. Um, so these things cost a lot of money, and um, we need the rich people to say, hey, it's important for these kinds of things to get to everybody, because it will improve everybody's lives, including yeah. the rich person. Okay, now here's my question. Because I guarantee you, the rich guy, Bill Gates, or, you know, or whoever is you know, rich, their lives are better if, if their friends uh, and their family's friends aren't dying from opiates or fucking up their family life and screwing up their companies because who's dying it's their workers you but know the, but this seems to be a problem and their community of people that have a good amount of money once you gain some money you gain a lot of problems so now we were just talking about lower lower socioeconomic status people having um, somehow have more happiness and more fulfillment in lives at yeah. times without all this crazy amounts of technology so maybe we yeah because staring at this doesn't make you happy N well, this will make you insane yeah. <laughs> and it did to me <laughs> and it still does so i study both sides the insanity and the sanity side sanity of life, and you know? insanity so yeah. okay so let's let's try and find the sanity 
within the side that's the most connected to technology and the sanity that's the least connected to technology and figure out the good in those and then bring them together yeah. because right now we have lower socioeconomic places in the world that yeah. don't have electricity or that don't have running water they don't have yeah. basic necessities but for some reason they are still enjoying life more than somebody that has to sit in traffic for two hours a day that has to pluck away at a computer keyboard at a job that yeah. they don't really like just to pay rent to live in a place that they don't really want etc because we were designed to walk through forests mm -hmm. and catch a fish once in a while yep. or catch an animal eat it or grow some vegetables exactly. and eat it and have a slow pace of life we need to learn something from that. From that, right? absolutely. How, how do you get, yeah. you know, this is why I'm, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand the role of vacations before I was forced to take one, right? And, and now I understand, oh shit, those people, those people have an answer to a lot of the unhappiness that yeah. we feel and a lot, that leads to a lot of bad behavior, you know, and we can go into that if you want. <laughs> um, yeah, so we can learn something from, from why our human brains are happier in some situations and how to bring it to this kind of world and how to, how to make sure you moderate. If you have to stare at a screen like this, how do you get away from it and do some exercise, do some meditation, do some, exactly. you know, pray a little bit, right? Do, Read a do book. You, do you think that we need to bring this technology to everyone across the world? Because at, right now, maybe only the wealthy can afford the autonomous vehicles and the AIs and the gene editing and all that stuff. But soon it I will think come some, to my level, my poor level. And then even sooner it'll come to the I, people that are way poorer I, than even I am. And so my, here's my I think thing. it does. Is it, is it actually important yes. for those? Yeah, it is. For, so, yeah. so you think that all seven and a half, potentially all seven and a half billion people need to be provided with this, these maximum. Optimizing technologies. I don't want to say everybody needs to have a pair of AI glass. Okay. Um, we have a bigger problem. Human beings at some point in the near future are going to start agreeing that we have a climate problem. Right? I'm watching the ocean. I live right by yeah. the ocean. There's fewer pelicans going by my window every year. The water is getting warmer. The climate's changing. We know this. We can watch it with satellites. There's now a startup that has a satellite or satellite pictures of the entire world every 15 minutes. So we can watch the data, mm -hmm. and the scientists know the data, and, and I'm on the side of, we have a problem, and we have a major problem. I'm on the side of communicating the science. Right, yeah. so how do we get everybody on the right side of bur stopping burning carbon, figuring out how to grow trees, and, and there was a report I saw yesterday that we've already passed the point of trees saving the earth. We need to figure out how to scrub carbon out of, the, out of the air faster and out of the sea. And this is going to be another problem. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about global, uh, the water level raising, and we can see it. The erosion here on the coast is starting to happen. The, the Ritz in 40 years is going to be gone. And they say that the rate of erosion is faster than they predicted when they built the Ritz 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right? So... We can see the water level going up. I don't think that's going to be a, the biggest problem. That's a huge problem for cities like Miami, uh, New Orleans, um, uh, San Francisco, New York, um, Shanghai, cities that are close to ocean. Water going up is a huge problem. It's going to Absolutely. cause a lot of damage and you're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. So we need these goal consensus. But I think there's a bigger problem. At the same time that, that we're heating up the ocean, we're also acidifying it. Exactly. And we're putting a lot of shit into the ocean, plastics and stuff like that. We're seeing a lot of die off of things. Um, you're seeing the, the uh, uh, Great Barrier Reef in uh, Australia, for instance, going dead. Yep. That's a warning sign yep. that soon the ocean isn't going to be able to support the food needs of many, many people. Yep. And you talk about all the different levels of people, from the rich guy who's eating sushi in to Tokyo to the poorest of the poor who's pulling a fish out of the yeah, ocean. Well, they're the same, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who get their nutrients off the sea life. Yeah, yeah. And soon, I mean, within the next two, so many decades, I'd, I'd have to look up the, the actual rate. Soon we're not going to be able to support human life off the oceans. So we're going to have to change our food uh, sources. Clean meat, all this good stuff. Well, yeah. And that's why I, I spent some time with an investor who's investing in Memphis meats and stuff like that. Yeah. Because they see this as a trend that soon yeah. we're going to need to make meat out of vegetable, vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. 
vegetable matter, vegetable prote proteins, because we're not going to be able to pull fish and or shrimp from the and stem stuff cell out. of a pig or a chicken or cow. Yeah, but I think we're even going to have to go further. We're going to have to go to totally Definitely. vegetable based uh, food. Well, I, you talk to a red blooded American about eat it, eating only vegetables, mm -hmm. they are like, fuck you. <laughs> no, you mean I got to give up my steak? You know, no way, yeah. right? So now we have a big problem. How do we get people to change? It goes back to Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, you can keep getting DUIs, <laughs> Mr. Drunk. Do you want to change and not fuck up your life anymore? You got to start changing. Yeah. And you got to start learning to change. Truck drivers, 1.3 million truck drivers in America. Yeah. You're not going to have a job in 20 years. Yeah. Let's just be honest about it. Exactly, yeah. So how do we change you? How do exactly. we get you into something new? Exactly. We can do it. We have the best technology of education yeah. we've ever yeah. had. We can yeah. teach somebody how to fix a Caterpillar million dollar tractor with these things. Yeah. And while we already are. We're even using this stuff on football. It's at Stanford University, there was a company called Striver that started by using VR so that the quarterback could visualize his plays exactly. better and learn faster yeah. and do plays better. And exactly. it, they have the stats. The rich people know the stats. Mm -hmm. it improves your life. This yeah. stuff improves your life. It's three thousand dollars, though, right? Yeah, yeah. And so a truck driver is like three thousand dollars. I don't want to do that. I'm yeah. Too dorky. And yeah. there, what are you gonna do? You know, I'm still driving a truck. And there's no solid educational curriculum for them to actually oh. be trained off of uh, truck driving into a new technology. No. Oh, so we need the rich people start talking about that instead of talking about you know guaranteed minimum income. That ain't going to be the answer because uh, that's socialism and communism. We don't like that. What is your answer then? If UBI can't sustain the post war world, um, what can? You need, we need to get to a world where we get cheap augmented reality glasses. That's coming. In the next three to five years, that's coming. But why uh, is that your. Because that teaches you new things very quickly. You want to learn how to cook? Right now, I'm having to learn how to run a crock pot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a frustrating piece of shit. The you, you, we should take, it, take these cameras down in the kitchen and show you the UI. The UI on a crock pot is like ludicrous. My friend Andy made fun of it. It's like, why is the, why is the minus sign right next to the power? You know, yeah. It's really hard to figure out. Um, and it's hard to figure out for somebody who's used to you know, figuring out weird shit. <laughs> You could have uh, uh, augmented reality in the kitchen teaching you how to do stuff, right? It can teach you how to cook, can teach you how to weld. If you, hey, watch this, watch this, this is fun. Okay, Google, can you show me how to weld on YouTube? It has an answer to that. It said, sure. Um, and um, it's trying to find an answer. And watch the whole thing in augmented reality in front of you on how to weld. Yeah. And there's how to cook. So you're saying that augmented reality is democratizing that as quickly as possible yeah. is the best way to get people to learn more efficaciously. Mercedes Benz already is using AR for the firefighters who are going to show up on your wreck. So let's say you're in a Mercedes Benz, you're in a bad wreck. The firefighters get there and they have to cut apart your car to save your life. And they have a few minutes to do this because you're dying. They use the augmented reality on a phone that shows where to cut the car apart without causing a fire. Mm -hmm. And it's for, 30 car, for all of the cars for the last 30 years already and for 30 different languages wow. already built. They built it because they know it saves lives. Mm -hmm. And it's better to teach people how to do that than looking through a book of book, paper of course, yeah. Trying to figure out is this is. car that car because it's you so, know okay so so what I'm hearing right now is that because perception was one of the most important evolutionary advances and then because we use it to see so much of what we interact with every single day and how we experience the universe is through these eyes mostly yeah. then it makes most sense to figure out how to quickly democratize augmenting our perception systems to better learn yeah. and engage and yeah. play and dance through this world and yeah. save lives and reduce suffering. That well, and, and make our lives better too, right? You know? Yeah. Interesting yeah. that augmented reality, you know, it, it was never such a clear answer 
for yeah. me like it is now. That yeah, reflect explain. over in Munich t told me this when I visited a few months ago. They're working on systems to get rid of manuals yeah. in the car, in, in your <sighs> furniture, right? You go to Ikea, why do you, why do you need to read a manual? With, even with pictures, it's hard. Use your phone, aim it at things, it says put that there. <laughs> It's really easy. We, we learn very fast visually yes. if we're shown stuff, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And you got back to what would the politicians do and the rich people do. Um, I don't believe that guaranteed minimum income is going to be sellable to many people Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. Maybe 50 years from now, that'll be an answer. But right now, people are still coming off the Cold War of thinking and still coming out of, you know, many of the rich people built their wealth by working their asses off and having a capitalist system, right? And they understand that is Absolutely. more efficient for society than a communist system Absolutely. in general. Yeah. China is starting to mess with our minds because they're playing with a different model. Yeah. And, but Americans aren't ready for that mm -hmm. Chinese system. Yeah, you know, absolutely. China can tell you to move and get out of your house today. Yeah. And you can't do anything about it here in America. We're not even close to thinking that, like that. that. Because they want to build a highway so or something. I don't believe we're going to be yeah. able to sell either to the rich people or even the poor people a socialism or communism easily. But my dad took us out of coal mining. My dad was the first one to go to college in our family and he took us out of coal mining to where I'm seeing the first guy to see Siri mm -hmm. in one generation right mm -hmm. and he did that with the GI Bill mm -hmm. so I think we need a new GI Bill we need a GI Bill where you um, Mr. Truck Driver you know sorry you're not gonna have a job a, a machine replaced your job um, but we're gonna give you a fair shot at the new American dream right New American Dream, you get four years. We're going to give you some glasses and maybe some human um, uh, instruction. Go to college some of the time. Go learn something new. We're going to test you on what you're good at, what you, know, what you can do with your fingers and your hands and your eyes. Uh, the eye doctor I was talking about, that the first thing she does is test you to see how bad your eyes are and where you have weaknesses, right? So she knows, can you play ball? Can you build something? Can you weld something? Can you lift something, right? So we can do some tests like that and see where you, you know, are you personable enough to put in a Starbucks? Well, I can teach you with augmented reality how to make a latte, right? Now all of a sudden you have a, a job and, you, and you're part of society. And that's a key to, wow. to society, to us. We need a mission in life. We need to feel like we're part of society. If you just give us a guaranteed minimum income and uh, even let me live the same life, I'm not going to be very happy. Because I'm not, I don't have a mission in life. I don't have something to do. I don't feel like I have an identity anymore. And you ripped away my identity that I built three years, 30 years driving a truck, right? Fascinating. So let me get a quick uh, summary of this is that UBI potentially won't work out because it's more difficult for people to become self-actualized by themselves when they're just getting a paycheck in the mail versus if we give them and democratize augmented reality for everybody and get them trained on things that they will slowly pick up something that they actually like doing every single day, then we can maybe retain more of the capitalistic model. They can find more creative work, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Even if yeah. it's something stupid, you know, it's, it's seemingly yeah. stupid. If you told me 20 years ago that people, that 10, 60,000 people would go in the middle of the desert and burn millions of dollars worth of art and yeah. have a party, yeah. I would have been, like, no right. been like, that's Fuck the stupidest that. idea so, I've ever heard. Yeah. Why would you so, burn art? Right? In the desert. And, yeah. and some of the best art There's that's no ever been generated. In the desert. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know? And, and why would you have a party in There's the middle no of the desert? It's in the desert. You're right? Yeah. It's what? hot as fuck in the I mean, desert. go back 100 years and say, why would we build Las Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe we need more Burning Mans, and we need, uh, those are going to be some of the creative jobs, is create entertainment for people. Exactly. But it's not going to be once a year, it's going to be every freaking day, day, right? Like that, yeah. And a new. Burning Man a day, yeah. Yeah, so and, and all around the world, world right? All around the now, all of a sudden, you got millions of people doing art, and yeah, yeah. maybe it's not. How do they get paid? for that well rich people seem like See, they're like very they willing like, to pay a lot of people to weld the stuff that they burned down or build the stuff that they burned down at burning man right yeah. so maybe okay 
maybe there's a pattern here. I would, as a rich person, maybe that's a little bit better than a guaranteed minimum income where yeah, you just create right. a, a welfare class of people sitting around doing nothing, be... right? At least you yeah. get a good party out of it, right? <laughs> a little bit more sellable than just sitting around doing nothing, right? Yeah. Um, and you start looking at what else you need to do in society. Now, the, the global warming is heating up the ocean, right? The ocean, what happens to water when it heats up? It kicks off more storms. So we're going to have more houses uh, blown away. Richard Branson lost his fucking Fucking house on his island. And he's a billionaire, (laughs) right? So even he was touched by global warming. And so you get uh, Houston lost 10,000 homes. New Orleans lost lots of homes. I was in the Ninth Ward and saw the effect of a flood, right? A lot of bad homes. They need to be rebuilt. So now you're building armies of robots or new kinds of homes. A, a friend of mine just sent me a home that can build itself, right? And assemble itself off of a truck. So now you're, you have armies of people building armies of homes to rebuild cities that are blown away by storms, right? And give people something, yeah. homes to live in, right? We just had a huge fire up here that burned 5,000, 6,000 homes. Yeah. Why aren't those homes already rebuilt? Why, why are we arguing about, how, you know, with insurance companies and, uh, uh, you know, all, all the uh, permitting processes and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's going to take two, three, four years to rebuild Build those homes. Three. Why can't we have an <laughs> army of robots that Coming rebuild in instantly yeah. and rebuild them and get people back in their homes? It's stupid to me. It's like we don't think about this stuff very well. I'd rather do that than have a guaranteed minimal income because uh, that gives people jobs and it gives people uh, a better way of life, less suffering in the world. And when, if you can do that for Napa, you can do that for Africa or, or wherever the need is, right? Syria. Why, you, Mr. Trump, you don't want to bring the Syrian refugees here? Let's build them fucking homes so they can live, you know, let's solve this problem, you know, so they can live where they want to live, which is in their home. They don't want to come here. They're coming here because they don't have a home anymore. Somebody blew it up and is causing problems in their neighborhood. People don't want to leave their home if they have a home. So let's fix this problem, you know. But with this uh, very affordable robotic. But house, we have a yeah. whole military industrial complex, complex that yeah. my dad was part of that likes to blow shit up, you yeah. know, because <laughs> it's millions of dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. The Israelis know this. Billions, they, yeah. When a missile comes from Palestine over, the computers decide whether they're going to blow up the missile or not because it costs half a million dollars to blow up the missile. You know, if it lands on a field, they're going to let it land. If it lands, if it's going to land on a house, they blow it up. You know, with the iron dome. Um, that's why so many brilliant people come out of Israel because they're thinking about that. Right? How, how do you not blow up money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but can we get along? I don't know. Uh, but can we build homes? Yeah, I think that's sellable to people. I think that I think people on the Trump side of the fence can get into that. Yeah. Mr. Trump, you want to build a wall? Let's build a wall around our cities, protect our city from the water that's going to come. You know, I'd be for that. You want to build a wall to keep is- immigrants out? Well, let's do something else. Come on, figure that. Figure out why they're coming here. Fix that problem. You know, they're coming here because there's a, a economic reality here. Apple computer started down the street. Two kids in a garage. Yeah. We built the wealthiest company in the world yeah. in 30 years. Right, yeah. that's the opportunity of being an American. So let's bring that America. Let's bring that opportunity to everybody around the world. Cure poverty around the world. Yeah. Why? Why is that an American only thing? It's not right. So the world's starting to work up, but we we got a ways to go. Technology is part of the solution. It's part of the problem. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're going to need a new Silicon Valley attitude. And uh, the, the CEOs haven't figured that out yet. You know? What? Benny Alf has, but you know, everybody else sort of like. So, so this is a very beautiful way to phrase kind of the state of things. I, I, I think so. I think when you speak of robots going in, building homes in places for very cheap, that's a very good idea to keep people in those places the way yeah. they want to live. Um, I think when you talk about um, augmented reality uh, rather than um, universal basic income, I think that's very interesting. I'm still slightly skeptical that. Well, and a, a GI bill. You, you GI need bill. four years to take a truck driver off a truck driving and, and give him a shot 
and doing something else so, so that it has might, some value. It might you not know? need to be quite that long because we see all the kids going through like Hack Reactor and things like that. Might the, not be. The boot camps. But, but and and certainly with, with augmented reality glasses, I can see a world where I could train somebody to Fast work at yeah. a Starbucks tonight. Because it shows you on true. top of the cups, and it senses so where everything fast. is. Well, but yeah, but even Starbucks is, is not something that we want to train them to do. That's all. No, that's, that's another, a legit job. Come on. That's another very robotic. I worked thing. a job like that. Come I on. I did too. I've worked so many <laughs> jobs like that, but it's a very it's a job that's heading towards being roboticized. Um, Maybe someday, but not today. I think within the same amount of time that truck drivers. So there's no point to train people to do it. My point is, I. If I ha had augmented reality glasses on your face, you could learn anything you need to I got, I got, in real time got, on top of the machine. I got so, your point. So if there is a job for a couple more weeks, you could have a job for a couple more weeks, and then we could switch you somewhere else. Your plumber's not going to sure, be sure. roboticized, sure. but I could teach you how to do plumbing if I had uh, so, so you know, what, maps of one, all the plumbing. One could get good at interdisciplinary learning on top of augmented reality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have something uh, to Oh, yeah. I, I've, been, I've been asking people, um, do you use Amazon? The yeah. Amazon app? Of course. Have you used the camera? Yeah. You, yeah, let's see it. Let's, see right. it. let's, let's do like the tire. So something. it's a hidden, it's there, but nobody knows what the it camera, does. Yeah, yeah. There's a little camera over here on, yeah, on yeah. Amazon, right? Let's get, let's get a, but, oh, there we go. But let me find something that might be uh, good for uh, us to, well, let's look at this camera, for instance. Let's, yeah. uh, let's look at this one because it has yeah. light on it. And you just turn on the camera and it starts scanning it and starts figuring out brand names and uh, things. And it, it didn't recognize that camera because that's not trained yet in the AI. Uh, that's a tough one because it's a it's But a let's camera, try yeah. your suit. Sure. And start it up. It starts looking at your suit instantly. Men's suits, tops, men's blazers, and shows me all the pictures. Look at those. Look at this. Show, show that camera over there. Yeah. Right? So... Show, show, yeah, let's show the, the, yeah. Back it up a little. Yeah, let's get a little glare. So put it on the middle one. Put it on the middle cam. This one. This one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it over. All right. <clears throat> so. Men's suits. I've been asking people in San Francisco, do you play with this? Literally nobody has played with that feature. Yeah. The, the, and, yeah and therefore, really literally cool. nobody has really tried it on a variety of things. Yeah. And literally nobody... Un is thinking about what that means in five or ten years. Exactly. Because you're going to have little cameras on your glasses yeah. that you just look at something and you say, oh, I like that suit. And all of a sudden a menu pops, pops off up. of yeah. it yeah. and starts telling you about it. Exactly. But the same camera technology will know everything about your world and will know yes. if you're working at Starbucks where the, your cups are, where your coffee uh, things are, where, where the controls are on the machine, and it'll tell you. Yes. It'll tell you how to do that. Yes. You're a cheap robot. <laughs> exactly. And I don't exactly. think every job is going to be yeah. roboticized that fast because right now to build a humanoid robot like they have you know, back in Boston that we've seen on YouTube, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, but I, I would, you know, you know Cafe it, X and there's so many I, other, there's so many other companies I, going into the tea and coffee robotics I get space. it. But I think that one is, that one is a clear example of very soon, just like autonomous vehicles. I, I get it, but there's still a lot of jobs that are going to be around for a while. Yeah. Maybe not okay. decades. I really but think that technology is important to play with is the go, go to the Amazon app on your phone, click the camera button in the search bar and start scanning things in your house yeah. and trying to see if it recognizes them and just get used to that sort of technology because that will be on your augmented reality glasses looking at the world around you. Now, just to go back one, one, one quick point about the creativity within the educational curriculum on augmented reality. I'm not sold on everybody that gets auto, get their job gets automated to be able to be retrained through education, through augmented reality, because I'm not quite sure that everyone is going to be able to do some sort of a creative endeavor with their Maybe I think out of a thousand a people, one. how many can? Yeah, let's 200, say, 300? Let's say 500 even. 500? That's yeah. worth saving, that's right? Amazing. That's exactly. amazing. That's amazing. 
The but, other but 500, you exactly. got to figure out something else. Something else, and we should figure out what that is. But if we can cover 50% with this, amazing. Let's get people trained. Let's get them trained. China's teaching this. kids this way. They know they don't have enough teachers to teach the kids. The kids are growing at a higher rate than the teacher pool is. So they're using VR and other techniques to teach their kids and spread the knowledge of the teacher to more kids. Yes. You know, the yes. teacher unions resist this kind of thinking because it keeps them in a job. Correct. But most of us can learn by watching a TED video. Yeah. A lot of us do. And so or why food. can't yeah. augmented reality teach a lot of kids? Now, I have a special needs kid. Their, their character language. I have a special needs kid. Yeah. I have an autistic child who's not going to be able to learn very easily, although augmented reality is going to play a huge role in his life in helping him be yeah. a, a productive member of society because his glasses will teach him and the remind emotions, him of things, well, emotions. all sorts of emotions. Uh, you know, look in people's eyes, you know, exactly. and it, but even, you know, teaching him how to tie his shoes and do things yeah. around the house and remind him of what he needs to do, right? And that will make him more productive. Um, yeah, you know, even if it's 500 people, 500 truck drivers, it's, uh, that's a huge way to solving the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't solve all the world's problems, but if I could solve 50% of the world's problems, that's a fucking... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'd be a hero if I could solve 50% of the world's problems. Yeah. You know, so all of us yeah. have to figure out how to, how to get more and more people in, into the new world. Now, there are lots of jobs. I, I visited a, a company in uh, Illinois called Agrable, and they grow virtual crops. That's a weird job. The job could not exist four years ago. They have a hundred and I think they have now a couple hundred Is employees. Is that for simulations of crops? Yeah, because guess what? We have new, yes, we have cool. new technologies in farming, right? We have a satellite over your field to understand your nitrate levels and your water levels and stuff like that. You have sensors on the field now. Uh, 3M said within the next five to 10 years, you're gonna have 50 sensors per acre. Uh, so you have Internet of Things uh, devices in your field, and certainly you get them on your combines now. Your combines cost a million dollars when you buy a new combine. And it has sensors sensing uh, the nitrate levels of the ground and all sorts of stuff. And you have government data feeds from the price of corn to the price of whatever. Their system takes all that data, um, analyzes it in a few seconds, grows a virtual crop, which predicts how your crop will do, your real crop, and sells the data back to the farmer. It's a pretty interesting company. It's right underneath John Deere's R&D lab in Illinois, yeah. right? Hundreds of people have a job today that couldn't exist four years ago, and there's going to be a lot more jobs like that. Those are highly trained jobs. They're computer scientists, yeah. data scientists. People understand how to see patterns in things, right? How to, how to take data off of an Internet of Things device and do something in code with it, right? The, those are highly trained people. So the truck driver to that kind of job is going to be hard. Yes. It's going to be hard. Yes. So I'm not going to try to take the truck driver to that kind of job. I'm going to try to take the truck driver to doing an Uber job or doing some other kind of job. You know, cutting lawns. I just saw three guys cutting our lawn out here, right? Um, those are little jobs, and, and they're really jobs in society. If, if, if I didn't have somebody cutting my lawn, I'd have to do it instead of looking at Twitter all day long. <laughs> should make me less efficient in looking at Twitter than I am, right? So, um, where am I going with all this? I got you. You can do a lot, and there's some real magical technology. There's technology that has a dark downside, and we're arguing yeah. that out because these things are listening to us at some level. I know they're not really listening to us, you know, but they're listening. Okay, Google, what's uh, two plus two? The answer is four, right? So it's listening, it's always there, and it's watching our patterns. It knows where I am. Yeah, you know, it, it, There's a lot, of, so, a lot of privacy we gave up to get a system like this. Um, but once you give it up, you get really magical do, stuff Do you like think that. that with privacy that, and I'm all for signing up for 50% of people getting work through uh, educational augmented reality. Amazing idea, I love it. Um, do you think that with privacy that it's better for us to all just completely give up access to everything in, term, in, in, in the light of benevolent people um, trying to parse that? And you can't have my bank information. So I do want that private. 
you can't have my password keys, right? That's uh, password keys, bank banking information. information. Um, we argue about this in Alcoholics Anonymous. I, I'm not even supposed to tell you that I'm in Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah, yeah. It's part of uh, anonymous. It's exactly. part of the word of it. Um, and we have an argument if that's cool now, you know, it does. I think it's our, our Bible, which is called the big book, doesn't talk about the Internet, doesn't exactly. talk about exactly. but it does talk about anonymity in, in press, radio and films. And it's there for a principle, which is keeping people sober. Yeah. If they think they're going to be outed by coming to an AA meeting, they're less likely to get sober. There's yeah. a principle there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's why they chose that structure. Because they know more people get sober if their boss doesn't find out about it or uh, their coworkers aren't giving them shit about their addiction or whatnot, right? Me, I'm just out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care about me. But I, I am very people. clear on that so principle you. because I understand why that, that rule was placed or that guideline, that principle was placed and its role in human minds and how, how helping people change. There's stuff like that that I think people are gonna want to keep out. Uh, healthcare is good, is still Ooh, healthcare is a good one to give away. <laughs> it is if you think like that. And then you know, there's also but, the healthcare where but, they can take something about you. And do you use want it to your, your sexually transmitted disease yeah, to get like to you? Or get do you to, want them to know that you might die early because of some sort of genetic problems? Or that, that you're going to be in the hospital or cause like Microsoft is a self-insured company. So if I hire you and I know you're going to be a cancer patient, I just cost the company money, right? So you might not want the hiring agents at Microsoft to know that you have cancer, right? So there's a lot of stuff, stuff like, like that. that. And there's big. a lot of things like if you're going through um, a gender reset, uh, 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 change, mm -hmm. people get killed for that still in America. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that to be dis discussed, right? Mm -hmm. You might not. There's a whole range there's of things, range of things yeah, that yeah. are dangerous to share. Exactly. And I, I'm not about sharing those kinds of things. Um, okay, but the so, okay. but but these systems do share Banking, that kind of stuff. Information, passwords, no goes. But uh, yeah, but these systems are totally working together to try and find the really I, good data. To I could share. figure out your password by listen. If I could listen to you tapping keys, I'm pretty Correct. sure that the key presses without your password. Yeah. So now we have, we start going down the Black Mirror route where we're going to have to figure, figure out how to protect people from consequences. I think is the right conversation to have. It's not about privacy so much. Although consequences is your, my identity is getting stolen. Well, that's why I don't want to give you my password mm -hmm. to my bank because yep. I know you'll rip off my money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or somebody, somebody out there will Definitely. rip off my money, right? Yeah. So that's why we don't want to keep those very private yeah. and why we want to and have passwords. different passwords for every website we go yeah. to because if you figure out how to hack my Gmail, all of a sudden you're getting into my bank, right? If I use the same password everywhere. So we start thinking about that. So there's security and privacy and cons consequences is the real one that I, I key in. How do we keep people free of consequences of you know, going to a doctor and putting on a medical device that's studying their body or putting their genome into the system, right? Yep. All of a sudden, I know everything about you. Yep. And, and if I can put a bracelet, I wore a bracelet at the next web when I was on stage <clears throat> that uh, was made by Empatica. And it has sensors that study my electrical system. And um, it's used with stroke victims now and, and seizure victims. And he could tell how nervous I was on stage in real time. That's cool. And he showed the audience how nervous I was. And then we started talking about the red light district and my uh, nervous system spiked up. Yeah, yeah. So now he's in my head a little bit. And well, when you're someday low, I can it's low. I can see wearing some sensors and understanding how you think. Definitely. Think about that. Now I can understand if you're a terrorist. Did you did you see where you can wear an EEG and then right when you're thinking about pressing the red button that it lights up red so it so it's mapping your yeah. signature before you actually get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, if so I can study good. your brain at that level, I know how you think. 
I, so, and I know where all your character defects are, right? Exactly. I know how that's, likely that's you are to be an ad, addict, or I know how likely you happens. are to be a murderer or a rapist or anything, right? Yeah, that's all very... And now I can start working with you to improve privacy. you. Exactly. But, there's the benefit of that and the downfall. But, but there's the downside. So right? This is good. That was good on privacy. Let's go. Let's go. Some, <laughs> let's do a couple speed round things to, yep. to, to end here. Let's do a speed round with geopolitics. What do you think about the United States and China kind of racing for AI, racing for genetic engineering, racing for colonizing Mars, all this kind of stuff? Should that, we be collaborating more? Uh, how should we be working on that? They're going to crush us. Uh, they have 800 million internet users. Their internet users are in cities uh, closer together than yeah. they are. They have more chaos in the street. They have more people to study. They have more users. They have people. Everybody is on uh, is being surveilled. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They don't care about surveillance. Their government has forced the citizenry there to put up with it. Um, they uh, are using it their phone for payments today. Most Americans still don't do that. Yeah, correct. Um, correct. So they are more advanced on their use of m mobile phones and technology. They're more likely to use VR than we are because they're in smaller homes where you want to escape from your family and you're very willing to put something on your face to escape. Um, and on and on. And the government is very willing to be, um, to, spend people's lives in, re in response to government initiatives. I saw it, I was there in 95 uh, in Shanghai and they took me up in the TV tower and they had just plowed uh, hundreds of acres. I.e. they had just moved a lot of people somewhere else and they had just raised, destroyed that part of town and he said that's where our Wall Street's gonna be. Exactly. And today that Wall Street is built. Yeah, when you go there all the tallest buildings they're in the world right or there. many of the tallest buildings in the world are there. Yeah. Right next to the TV tower you're looking down on the TV tower, the full tower. The government is very willing to make action like that uh, and mess with their citizenry because they and the citizenry it puts up with it because they recognize they're getting richer because they're moving faster than we are we and they're are, taking yeah. more risks and they're doing things. They build buildings in days Instead over there. Instead of months or years, yeah. yeah. And Fixing an escalator in six months here <coughs> versus there you can build a world-class computer. And so they are running ahead. They're running ahead. But um, what about genetic engineering and open same trials thing. or S AI and open systems? Same thing. They're, but, they're, but they're taking the risk on behalf of all of civilization. They're not even taking the risk on just behalf of them. They're going to do it. They're going to do it, and they're going to discover all sorts of new things. And they might kill us in the process. No, I don't think they're going to kill us, because they're just as self-interested in, in staying alive as we are. Uh, they're going to discover new ways to make people's lives better, because they're going to see patterns that we don't see. Their self-driving car, the, the lady who runs Alibaba's self-driving car team, says, we're behind America. We know that. Google's been doing self-driving car since the 90s, right? I saw Stanford's uh, team uh, win the DARPA challenge. But they have way more chaos in the street. And these systems, I mean, I took the Tesla yesterday for a drive and let it auto drive. There's no fucking chaos on my little street out here, two-lane road. You might think there is, the trucks coming mm -hmm. toward you and stuff like that. But in China, there's 500 people, 1,000 people on the street and walking around. And there's people, I saw two motorcyclists going the wrong way. There's so much chaos that the system will have to learn to deal with. So their system is going to learn faster, 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 and mm -hmm. going to outpass ours in terms of incidents per 100,000 miles. And their systems are going to uh, be better in 20 years. Than so ours. you think China's leading the 21st century? Yeah, I think and I think they're uh, they are. I think Silicon Valley right now is still Silicon Valley. I mean, Google's still yeah, here, yeah. Apple's still yeah, here, Facebook's, Facebook, yeah. Facebook's Twitter. But the centricity, you can feel it's moving over to Beijing, right? We, WeChat, yeah. billion people using it now, right? Yeah. Uh, all the systems. And they're doing payments, there. the surveillance, the oh, machine everybody's, learning on all the everybody in society. Of recognition software, everything you, you walk around, you see surveillance cameras everywhere. You see uh, barcodes everywhere. You aim your phone at it, it tells you stuff about it. They don't, we don't have that here. We don't have the payments being yeah, done yeah. the way here. Yeah, so true. we're starting to fall behind. And, you know, it's, um, 
we're moving into an age where AI is going to be in charge of things. And if you have more people to study, you're going to have AI is going to out, outstretch um, when you have fewer yeah, people to correct. study. Now, do you, with the social stratification, class-based speciation, do you think that it's going to be a uber wealthy and a not the haves and not haves? Do you think it's going to be bifurcation, trifurcation? How many different breaks do you How many see? years do we have? Let's say 20. Hmm. 20 years from now, we're going to have quantum computing, which will start to go on. Um, most of us are going to be wearing glasses, and I would assume the glasses are going to reach the same level, level of people as phones do. Exactly. So we have 4 billion phones in the world, right? Something like that. So let's say in 20 years, 4 billion glasses. If you have a glasses on, you're having about the same life I'm having today. I, you're living life pretty good. You have access to the world's knowledge. You have access to the world's supply chains. You have access to the world's jobs. You have access to the world's education. Uh, you can learn how to do anything with the glass on, and you can be entertained. So ah, that sounds like a pretty good world. And you're being taught not to put carbon in the air, so you're maybe saving the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're being taught how to build really advanced things. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have a better job, you're going to have to learn to do really advanced things or things that robots just are too, still too expensive for. Um, I think, you know, that's the world I want my kids to live in, I, you know. Give them a shot. I, I, I can't guarantee he's not going to be poor. I can't guarantee he's going to be good or criminal, but I want him to have a shot. Shot, yeah, exactly. You know? just Everybody have a shot. Exactly. I, I talked to a computer scientist who uh, teaches at-risk kids in, in Chicago, and he says, you, you get beat up if you carry around a math book. He says, so I teach him on the cell phone. Every drug dealer has a cell phone. Yeah. They don't beat up people for carrying around a cell phone. Yeah. They'll keep beat you up for carrying around a math book. Yeah. I.e., people don't have a shot to escape from their poverty. I, I, my yeah. first interview at Microsoft was with uh, Bill Hill, who escaped from poverty in Scotland by going to the library every day exactly. and reading. Exactly. He had a shot. He had a library. Exactly. And we need to do that for every kid so that they have a shot at being a, 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 an Elon Musk yeah. or a... Or a, Interesting. You know, so you really or a Cheryl Lee Calder. You're putting a lot of your chips into four billion people having augmented reality headsets that give them access to the world's knowledge and creativity, creative jobs. And I visited uh, slums in South Africa. You know, these are houses with a corrugated metal shack with a dirt floor, and almost all of them had a satellite dish. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Now these weren't the poorest of the poor. They're three, you know, they're poor, but they're not. They don't live in a house like yeah. this. But um, but they had a TV and a satellite, satellite dish. dish yeah. I they want to watch football and be entertained. You know, everybody does. The um, I saw a movie that just got released at, or it's not a movie. It's a VR experience, uh, but done by Oculus Story Studio called Wolves in the Walls. And when you're playing VR, you know, Oculus Rift, the actress um, walks up to you with a flashlight, hands you a flashlight, and you take it from her, and you just look at it for 10 minutes. Because <laughs> you're like, well, holy shit, I'm holding a virtual flashlight. Mm -hmm. And you shine it in her eyes, and it shines on her. And her eyes are following me, like your eyes are following me. And she's talking to me. It's an AI that's talking to me, right? Yeah. It's not all that convincing, but it's pretty convincing. And there's a Polaroid camera sitting on a desk over here, and you pick up the camera, and you look at that too, and it goes, that's cool. And you take a picture, a virtual picture, and it spits yeah. out a virtual Polaroid, yeah, and then you, you hold it in there. your hand mm -hmm. using your controllers. Exactly. And you watch it develop the way I watched a Polaroid camera a so photo develop when I was a high school student, right? It's like entertainment now, you're going to be in the entertainment. Yeah. That's going to be the expectation soon. Exactly. That you don't watch Star Wars on a screen. You're in, in Star, Star Wars. Wars. You're yeah. walking up to a stormtrooper and going, well, that is badass. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and talking to a droid yeah. or so having a droid. Turns over and goes, do you want to be join our force? And then yeah. you suit it up. And, you and you're going to see it 20 times because one day you want to be Darth Vader. One day you want to be Princess Leia. Yeah. One day you want to be, you know, this is going to be movies pilot, soon. Yeah. Like. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. So I know movies are going to be like this. So that's where in entertainment's 10, going. Years. And we talk about where jobs is going so, and learning is going. So everybody's going to want these eventually. Everybody. 
Yeah, from the poorest to the poor, the richest to the rich. And you think that it's the perception via the... So what about in 20 well, years, can, rather than it being the perception on the glasses augmented, what if it was an actual yeah, neural, yeah, yeah, neural yeah, prosthetic? Yeah, yeah. That's the true okay. singularity, but okay, I, okay. that's too weird you, for you, me, you, man. You, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a different kind of future, as cool. you should talk to. Cool, I think cool. about the next 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with and augmented reality glasses. We're going to get glasses. Sooner than a prosthetic. All right, yeah, let's, because let's, it, let's, I, I met brain surgeons who um, work with um, Parkinson's guys, right? Parkinson's yeah. uh, sufferers. Yeah. Their hands shake like this, right? Yeah. If you meet somebody with bad they have Parkinson's, the spoon that can no. offset that, which is great. No, no, and then no. Yeah, motor cortex connection. They go into, they do a brain surgery, costs one hundred fifty thousand dollars. They put a probe into your brain with an electrode at the end of it. They get it close enough to the cells that are causing this problem. They turn it on, and your hands steady wow. out. Wow. You can watch this on YouTube. Go to YouTube yeah. and and search for. Uh, Parkinson's surgery or Parkinson's, yeah. Um, yeah. I forget the actual thing. Wow. But there's videos of people with hands like this, they turn it on and their hand steadies out. Yeah. So, but it's $150,000. And then and there's and that spoon that's much cheaper that will offset the actual. That's great for somebody with low grade. But if your hands are shaking like really this, bad. You, well, also, you I've don't seen cannabis that. fix that as well. I've seen a good amount of things. We should use all the all techniques the to solve the brain problems. Yeah. But where I was going with this is, you, to to jack you into the internet, like you're talking about, you're yeah. gonna have to go into my brain. That's expensive. You're gonna have to put me under a little bit, and and it causes side effects because you're cutting through brain matter, and we don't know how to do that. Versus anymore. just putting the object here and being able to take it off whenever we want. Yeah, yeah a visual. Right. right now, we're gonna get glasses that show you some sort of visual, like these Hololenses do. Yeah. Right. The Hololens puts a visual field right in front right. of you yeah. and tells you stuff. It's cool. So, so let's let's end on just our classic questions, which are: Do you think we are alone in the cosmos? In your thumb, it's 10,000 stars, yeah, uh, yeah, galaxies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one galaxy, there's 100,000 stars. So who the fuck knows? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if there's not life out there somewhere, I'd be highly shocked, okay, right? Cool, but cool. the life, it might be so many light years away that we'll never, ever see it. It won't even see the Tesla that just got fired out. <laughs> do, you, do, you think, do you think there are advanced civilizations roaming the cosmos? Uh, I, it's one of those questions like Elon Musk saying, it's, this is a simulation. It, well, th this could be a simulation. I can't prove it's not. So do I, you think we're in one? Um, can't prove I'm not. Can't prove I am. Okay. If, if we are, this is a badass program. <laughs> badass programmer. I love that. Exactly. I want to meet Exa the programmer. Exactly. If this is a simulation, this is badass. The math right? is done so well yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and same thing with life out, out in the world, in the universe. I, I can't say there's not. It's too big a universe, you know. Yeah. I won't be shocked if an alien comes in and says hi, yeah. you know. I, I'm not, and that's one reason I'm not truly an atheist either. I, I'm willing to believe if God showed up right now and said hi, I'd be like, what's up, God? Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to say that doesn't exist, but and the God within you, and I do have a higher power because that helps me uh, uh, deeply. So, yeah. and um, it's a very different higher power than the religions teach me. Um, you know, my friend had a near-death experience, and she said she saw God. Am I supposed to argue with her? Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, she said, on the other side is something so unexplainable Unable. that she can't explain it to me. And people experience that on LSD or on... I've been on LSD. I didn't yeah. have an experience like that. Or, or, or <laughs> I had a lot of colors in my world. <laughs> I made the rug do weird shit, but come on, I didn't see that. Or through really deep meditations yes. or through 5-Amino DMC. There's so many different ways to... to touch God outside of yourself as well. So, okay. Yeah. Amazing. I, my mind is expanded to so many new dimensions. Thank you. Now I go back to Twitter. <laughs> to my addiction. <laughs> to my last to addiction. <laughs> I don't got alcohol or drugs anymore, but I got Twitter. <laughs> so I want to, um, I want to say to the viewers at home, thank you guys so much for yeah. tuning in. Um, if you guys had a good time on the program, please like, 
comment, subscribe. We are on Patreon, so if you guys uh, thought this was useful for you, please become a member. You get benefits like being able to ask our guest scientists questions. You get access to early content ahead of time. Uh, you get access to exclusive content, live events ahead of time. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Um, Robert's Twitter is going to be down in the bio. Um, we want to give a big shout out to Ron Vargas, who is our director. He's been doing such a great job helping out with the simulation. And again, thank you, Robert, so much. Thanks. Huge yeah. thank you. My mind's expanded so many new What's dimensions. What's up, Bart? Bart said he'd never seen TweetDeck up on a, a big screen before. There we go. You know, this I love is, it. It's like having an Associated Press wire machine of it's, the world so I can watch the world. to you, exactly. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Robert. Fun. Thank you. Super fun. Yeah. My mind's.